Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the second webinar in the series of Manifestation of the New Civilization organized by the 2025 Initiative. My name is Alexander Ilchuk, and I welcome you on behalf of the 2025 Initiatives Coordination Group. The purpose of this project is to bring forward the vision of the new civilization. The Tibetan master Zhuo Ku uh, shared with us about the importance of the triangle of three countries, Great Britain, United States, and Russia, as a triangle that focuses the current civilization and plans the seeds for the next coming Aquarian civilization. So in this series of webinars, we invite representatives of each of these country, groups from each of three countries, to come forward and share the vision of the new civilization, and also to share about their work on manifesting this coming Aquarian civilization. Before we start our sharing and our work today, let's come together in alignment, coming as one group, visualizing ourselves, joining through space in a circle. And we see individually ourselves as a point of light projected to this circle the ring of light and we see other points of light coming together forming this brilliant radiant circle of light And we link in the heart center, projected with radiance of our individual heart center. And we stand together as a united group of world servers. Mediating between the spiritual hierarchy of the planets and humanity. Recognizing and accepting our responsibility to bring forward the vision of the plan. Thank you. Today we continue our work and today is the second webinar and our guest, or should I say host, is the Sandile House group from Great Britain and Janet Irvins uh, will share with us today and will lead us in meditation. Hello, Janet. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today and thank you for accepting the invitation that your group joined this circle. And we are eager to hear 
all the experience and wisdom, accumulated wisdom of your group, share it with the community. So the floor is yours, and uh, should I make you a presenter? To show please, you please. Here we go. Please. Are we there? It's coming. There we go. Here we yes. go. Thank you very much, Alex. Hello, everyone. Well, I am pleased to have been invited to share with you a presentation on the continuing work of the Group for Creative Meditation that works with the laws and principles of everyday life. The foundation of the Group for Creative Meditation, working with these laws and principles, which are also known as the laws and principles of the soul, began in 1952 as a response to a call to service. This call to service was made by the Tibetan teacher, the Master Dwal Kul, to his group of disciples. Roberto Azajoli was a disciple and a student of DK, and he responded to this request and announced his intentions in a talk given in a May-June meeting in Switzerland in 1952. DK asked for the setting up of a united world group given to unanimous and simultaneous meditation upon the work of preparing for the new order and jurisdiction of the Christ and to establish the laws and principles which will control the coming era, the new civilization and the future world culture. This quote is taken from Diana 2, pages 231 to 239. Within the Bailey DK writings and the wisdom teachings, the jurisdiction of the Christ is taken to refer to the influencing qualities of the higher self, the soul, or Christ consciousness, which is, in, with, which is within the heart of each person and finds expression in their thoughts, words, and deeds. Before we, before we explore a history of the founding of the Group for Creative Meditation, which is now a worldwide movement that functions midway between hierarchy and the new Group of World Servers, I'd like to share with you a visual presentation of the principle of unanimity. So I'm handing us back to Alex now for a shared screen experience.
Thank you, Alex. So let's see if we go to the next one. Good, here we go. So the group for creative meditation was set up in response to an hierarchical request. And it, the request was made by DK, the Tibetan teacher, and Alice Bailey, working with Roberto as a Jolie, was able to share this invitation, which Roberto responded to. Foster Bailey managed to find two co-workers, Michael Eastcott and Nancy Mager, who were willing to work with Roberto Azzajoli to bring this idea into manifestation. Here's a photograph that's taken of them in 1953, and this is the year that they began working together. Every year they met for a summer meeting, which took up to six weeks every year. Um, and here's a photograph of Michael and Roberto taken in the grounds of one of their houses in Tunbridge Wells in 1953. And here's a bigger group uh, in the grounds of Sundal House during 1960. Here we have Florence Carrigu, who was the founder of Meditation Mount in California. Here we have Nancy Magor. Here's Roberto. And I think Michael is taking the photograph. It's a photograph of Alice Bailey, possibly taken in the grounds of the Arcane School headquarters, which were in Tunbridge Wells at that time. And here we have three international co-workers. Here we have Florence Carrigu, who it was the founder that, who set up Meditation Mount in California. Here is Ida Palombi, who worked with Aza Jolie to set up the Group for Creative Meditation in Italy. And here we have Regina Keller, who introduced the Creative Meditation Papers into the work of the School of Esoteric Studies in New York. Here's another one of those summer meeting photographs. Here we are, we've got Michael taking the photograph. Here's Florence again, and there's Nancy over there. This is uh, Roberto, and here is Michael Huber, the son of the Hubers, who set up with the help and support and encouragement of Roberto Huber Astrology. And this, again, is a meeting in the early 1960s. And here is a photograph of Roberto's desk in uh, Casa Azagioli in Florence. And here's another photograph of Nancy, Roberto, Michael, and St. Bernard, the dog, Marcus. And this is a photograph taken in the library at Sundal House in 1963. Here's the tape recorder. And this was used to record all of uh, Roberto's talks, which were then worked up into study papers, which are present in the study materials in the 10-year program, the Group for Cre Creative Meditation Service Activity. Some of these audio tapes are also offered as MP3 audio recordings on the Sundal House website. Some of the quality of these tapes um, or recordings is not really good, but they are well worth listening to. They still carry a fine energy. And here is a photograph taken of a Magna committee meeting in 1963. Magna means or is a meditation group for the new age. And these international co-workers came together to bring alive this training course, this three-year training course, so that students uh, could begin to learn about this work and take their part, play their part, in world service. And here in the 1980s is another photograph of T in the library. Um, and here's Michael Escott, and this is Louise Hoover. And here's the photograph of Azazioli here.
So my question is, what is creative meditation? Well, everything that is man-made or woman-made in our world has had its origins as an idea in some human inventor's mind. Ideas populate the formless fields of thought that are also known as the buddhic plane, the realm of ideas, or the plane of pure reason. The new idea is harvested from this formless field of thought during a period of silent, focused, contemplative meditation and worked up over a period of time in the mental fields of thought, along with the added emotional astral incentive of mo motivation, wishes and desires to meet the initiating perceived need. Finally, cooperating with right timing and having gathered the necessary materials and support, the idea is made manifest within the phenomenal world and dispatched to fulfill its task and performance. It may be an item, for example, an electric car, or it may be an article, a book, or a talk, or a presentation. So creative meditation works with the creation of new forms of thought that precipitate from the formless fields of thought into the world of men and women as new manifestations a hard copy of the originating idea, if you like, to perform a function in the here and now. This group of creative meditators work with the laws and principles of the soul to prepare the way for the foundation of the new civilization and world order. So what is a law? According to DK, a law is, in reality, the effect of the life of a greater entity as it encloses a lesser within its living processes. It embodies formulated purpose of organized will of an enfolding life, against which the expressed purpose or determined will of that ensouled is entirely helpless. Now, I am offering a simplified definition of a law. A law can be regarded as a set of guidelines that give structure and facilitate growth. And an example would be the highway code, the rules of the road, which when followed by drivers, gift to each of them a sense of safety, even in unfamiliar territory. Now, DK gives us three sets of laws, the laws of nature, which are separative laws of the form nature, the laws of the soul, which are the blending laws of group integrity, and cooperation with these laws gives rise to a growing evolution of group consciousness. And the laws of life, the dynamic laws of being itself. And these are taken from Esoteric Healing, page 522 to 523. So what is a principle? A principle is known as an idea of God. It is also considered to be an energy that heals, redeems and unifies Principles can be viewed in the light of eternity and personalities from the standpoint of time. In many situations, two principles are involved. One is secondary, but because they are principles, they are both right. Safe guidance on this is to remember that the basic principle calls for the play of the intuition whilst the secondary principles are more purely mental. When responding to the basic principles, the wisest method is that of silence and a joyful confidence that the law works. So a principle, when really fundamental, appeals at once to the intuition and calls out an immediate reaction of assent from the individual's higher self it makes little or no appeal to the personality. 
a principle embodies and draws out the soul potential in relationship to the self and the self in relationship to others and to situations. So a principle substands a law and cooperating with a law reveals its underlying principle and then real magic is at play. The soul is active within the group field. Everything is relationship and relationship is everything. See if I can do this. And here is a summary of the laws and principles of the soul active in everyday living that the group for creative meditation, this worldwide movement works with. There are three principles and there are three laws and they're worked with sequentially throughout the year. So from the 21st of December to the 20th of February, the group works with, with the law of right human relations. And right human relations thrive within a climate of understanding and commitment to the common good. A living wisdom is needed when we work together for the best values and outcomes. And the word right here means the common goal or purpose. Now, when we are working with the law of right human relations, the principle is revealed and experienced. And the principle at play here is goodwill. And goodwill is a quality that is like sunshine. When goodwill is present, people respond positively to its warmth with kindness and cooperation and generosity. It is a creative energy. Now, when the law and principle are both at play within the group field, we have a thriving community, a flourishing society, because each individual recognizes that the other exists and they take this into their considerations. From April the 21st up to and including June the 2nd, the group then works with the law of group endeavor, which means working together and making creative use of mutual qualities. This ability to work with a common purpose as a team member demonstrates the strength of the collective and interdependence of all. And when this law is worked with, it reveals the principle of unanimity at work within the group field. And unanimity is the union of the whole achieved through the qualities of the soul in daily relationships. This self-realizing lifestyle leads to a group culture that is inclusive and transformative. So again, when this law and principle is at work, within a community, a family, a society, we have each individual recognizing that they have a quality, the other is a quality, and together we unify, unify our diverse qualities and co-create new solutions and understandings. The law of spiritual approach is the law that we are currently working with. And the law of spiritual approach is a gradual and subtle transformational process. We acquire our personal wisdom through the experience of daily living. We learn by doing. This develops wisdom and brings us closer to our inner spiritual source and that of all beings. And the principle of essential divinity then comes to play its part in the group field. An essential divinity is the deepest innate nucleus of our being. It is the fire of the one life. It is the nutritive center of silence that is the goal of consciousness for individuals and humanity. We come to realize that I am, I am pure essence. I am one with all beings. And this realization working within a community culture or society demonstrates a synthesis. Hang on, let's see how we go with this, sorry. So 
so the call to service by DK and the hierarchy was to institute the group for creative meditation working unanimously and simultaneously with these laws and principles of everyday living thereby building the foundations of the new civilization and world order right here and now. So what is group simultaneity? Well, we will all be pleased to know that we practice group simultaneity regularly. The following are examples of when as meditators, we join subjectively with and within a universal group appeal, whether we know it or not. And in this way, we are participating participating in and contributing to group simultaneity. When we take part in the five o'clock mantram of the new group of world service, when we undertake daily creative meditation that works with the bi-monthly cycle of the laws and principles in each annual cycle, the simultaneous subjective work at each full moon, and especially with the April, May and June full moons, the simultaneous use of mantras and invocations, the simultaneous service, that is taking part subjectively and objectively with group projects. There are two aspects to simultaneity, the vertical and horizontal. Simultaneity in its horizontal sense can be regarded as synchronization of endeavor cyclic progression, unanimous right timing. Simultaneous vertical or inner alignment can be considered as inner revelation, penetration in a flash through areas of consciousness that bring a touch of the truth, glimpsing the higher states of awareness. We come to realize that these are out of time these touches open the way to more abstract areas of consciousness in which we shall eventually learn to work. Now, DK has presented us with an emblem, a symbol of the cross as an expression of the vertical and horizontal life. He tells us that he's combined two crosses that of the vertical and horizontal life with the cross of humanity. And he's also added a circle at the summit of all three. And so this slide shows us uh, what he has in mind. The vertical life of spiritual contact is constantly preserved by meditation, prayer and concentration. The horizontal life of service is preserved by meeting the perceived needs of the time. The long limb symbolizes the, symbolizes the disciples need to shine a light into the depths of human life. And the sphere portrays the place of the disciples evolving consciousness. So Roberto Azajoli in an article on the important role of creative meditation explains to us in an easy to follow way the importance of unanimous and simultaneous meditation on these laws and principles. So this is what Roberto tells us. When we meditate on these great themes, the laws and principles of the soul, we are joining on the inner levels with others working for the same purpose. All know the added power of concerted group action and realization that we are part of a great meditating, subjectively building group counters the tendency of the isolated individual to feel ineffective or to become the victim of anxiety, negativity, and even despair. The sense of isolation is in fact artificial. We all participate consciously or unconsciously and willingly or unwillingly in the life of the whole of humanity and even more so 
in the life of the universe. The more we recognize this and tune into and work with the laws of the larger life, the more serene and effective we become. And one of the most practical steps in this direction is creative meditation. And now I'm going to hand us back to um, Alex and he's going to show us a video, probably without sound, because the um, platform that we're using doesn't seem to be able to give us a good sound uh, representation. So, thank you, Alex. Um, the Group for Creative Meditation, its main function is to create vibrant, constructive forms of thought, which seed the thought climate in which we live and move and have our being. So let's consider the building of forms of thought. And a broad def we do this when we meditate creatively. A broad definition of meditation embraces other kinds of inner action for which disciplined thought is a prerequisite. The three principal inner actions are reflective meditation, which can be considered as an approach, receptive meditation, which can be considered as contact with the subtle worlds. And so receptive meditation and, and reflective meditation are the two stages, two preliminary stages of alignment. Creative meditation is receptive and precipitative. 
and it is the primary work of the Group for Creative Meditation. To be effective, there needs to be an adequate preparation to meditate. The initial stage is a, is a withdrawing to inner action. And this involves disidentification from the self, the personality, and identification with the self or soul. In this way, meditation brings the lower instrument into a condition of receptive vibratory response to that of the soul, also known as the ego and the solar angel. And then this reciprocity can be used to produce specific results. One of the objectives of daily meditation is to enable the brain and mind to vibrate in unison with the soul as it seeks in meditation deep to communicate with its reflection. And this quote comes from a treatise on white magic, page 74. And DK has said, lives are changed primarily by reflections. Qualities are developed by directed conscious thought. Characteristics are unfolded by brooding concentration. Brooding consideration, I'm sorry. So building thought forms then involve disidentification, reflective meditation, pondering on a seed idea, preparing through concentration to focus the lower mind. The focused attentive mind then inhabits the field of mind and is poised and aligned to make contact through the abstract higher mind and come into a reciprocal energy alignment with the soul. Receptive meditation, the focused attentive mind is held in reciprocal vibrational alignment with the soul, the higher self, and is open and receptive to receive insights and impressions from, from the realm of ideas, the Buddhic plane, the kingdom of souls. The idea takes shape and a template is built in the substance of the ethers of the cosmic physical plane. The intuitive impression and insights as a, come together as a template is then brought into the center of the head where it comes into resonance with the mind and brain. It is here that the idea is clothed in mental matter. Eventually, the idea is dressed in astral matter, clothed with the desires and wishes that will motivate and launch it on its way into manifestation to meet the perceived needs as an act of service. The final manifestation phase involves the sharing, release and detached dispatch of the product, e.g. talk, an article, a thought form, into the collective field of consciousness that lifts and aids humanity and those striving daily to serve humanity, the new group of world service. And it's through this work of creative meditation, working with the laws and principles of the kingdom of souls, the kingdom of heaven, that we as a worldwide group can bring into being the new civilization, the new culture, and the new world order. Thank you very much. Thank you, Janet. Very concentrated presentation. Many seats. Many seats, thank you, Alex. We invite now um, a circle, uh, those who join from different parts of the world, uh, to be part of this exploration, to share your thoughts and uh, maybe questions. And uh, for that, please uh, use the function raise your hand, uh, raising your hand, and we will unmute you.
there is also opportunity to write your thoughts in the chat window as usual, but it's good to hear your uh, voice. Usually it takes some time to uh, bring the first question to or first comment to, uh, to the circle. So I uh, want to ask you, Janet, if um, you could uh, share your uh, and your group uh, vision and experience working with the cycle, the seven year cycles of the festival week of the new group of all service. We all know that later this year in, in December, uh, from December 21st to December 28th, it's that uh, unique opportunity that uh, DK warned us about. Uh, maybe warned, not the right word, but <laughs> uh, strongly encouraged us to use and to prepare uh, for each of such opportunities. Okay, well, um, I can talk about this year um, where we have been working uh, with uh, our normal meditation routine and you may know or realize that the um, community of living ethics in Italy uh, brought together uh, an international conference entitled The Planet Within. And after that uh, conference had finished, the participants dispatched uh, and went their way. Some of them came via Sundal House. And so part of our preparation for the festival week of the new group of world servers has been to uh, hold a one day event in August uh, where we um, were very fortunate to have visiting speakers that presented uh, this um, window on the worldwide service that we all do and participate in and contribute to every day. And uh, I think we, we all know about this uh, new initiative or this initiative from Dot Mava, uh, the um, sounding of the bell and the silent minute, um, which is going to take place at the winter solstice. So our group is very much focused on using these laws and principles and working with the new group of world servers as they prepare for this festival week. Thank you. Thank There's you. a question. Uh from uh, Frida, Frida Camp. Um, I will read it. Okay. Um, thanks for a wonderful talk. Uh, can you expand on the theme of supporting the new group of world servers? Okay, I'll do my best. Um, thanks, Frida, um, for the question. Um, the new group of world servers. Um, is supported by the work, the thought forms that we create as a group and release into the thought form, uh, the thought climate, the thought aura of the world. And the group for creative meditation works with the laws and principles of the soul. And so the thought forms that are created will carry some of the essence of these laws and principles at the heart of the forms created. And these thought forms, when they are released into the collective, are there to be tapped into and to lift and aid the workers in the field, the new group of world, world servers, wherever they're working. And they're also available for um, women, men and women of goodwill everywhere who may be inspired and supported by these positive constructive forms of thought to offset the negativity um, and the battle that's going on at the present time. It may lift and aid them and fortify their own inner 
knowingness and light. Hope that helps to answer that question. How do you see um, the the balance between the esoterical part of the new group of old service and the rest of the uh, group, the wider group, those servers who don't know anything about the esoteric oh. work? Uh, is it are we in the right relations? <laughs> <laughs> so, towards the wider group, or do you see there's uh, some work that we as esotericists are responsible to do uh, more proactively? And specifically mm -hmm. talking about all these great ideas and yeah. techniques. I love it. We, we are safeguarders of, of uh, very powerful technologies in a way. Yeah. Well, Alex, that is a brilliant question. Um, the esoteric work, the fundamental esoteric work is to, for us, I share this with you, um, is that we become light bearers. We become radiant magnetic points within the fields where we operate. So I think somewhere, if I can go back, I might be able to go back, I don't know. No, I can't. Um, that image of the um, cross of vertical and horizontal alignment, the esotericist will be able to build a bridge into the higher subtle realms that will inspire and illuminate their inner lives, whilst at the same time turning and functioning in everyday relationships, but bringing those relationships alive with the positivity and a confidence that the soul brings. And once we resonate with that inner soul alignment, we bring that alive in others that we come in contact with. It it's just happens. And so esotericists are able to use this inner light of kindness and loving understanding spoken or unspoken, to bring that into the field of relationships wherever they are. And that's the work of the new group of worlds, uh, the esoteric server, to bring a balance into the field of the new group of world servers who have yet to awaken to this side of their capabilities so that they don't get overwhelmed with the tasks and the battles that they deal with. So we are supporting them at a distance with our light, if you like. Hope that helps answer that one, Alex. It definitely shines the light on that. Because sometimes I feel myself, uh, I catch myself uh, in the guilt that as those that king who sits on the treasures and not shares it with others. You can't help but share, I don't think. Anyway, that's my philosophy. Once you begin this work, it's like putting on soul perfume every morning. You can't help but um, have an effect. Yes. As long as you don't get overwhelmed in doubt and despondency. Mm -hmm. There's a, a question from uh, Jean. Uh, how are the individual seed thoughts in group work selected? It seems like there would be an order in their presentation. That's an interesting question. Um, thank you for that question. The foundational work is with the current law and principle and we are invited as we progress in this work to select our own seed thoughts something that catches our attention attention something that resonates with us something that speaks to us um, in the training course material in the three-year training course material we do offer some seed thoughts for the students and the co-workers to work with but eventually 
uh, we are um, encouraged to select our own seed source. I've got one here that I happen to like. Um, it's just available in my memory, so I'll share it. And there is a seed thought uh, that goes something like, I have no enemies, I have no friends, I live and work with souls. And a seed thought, um, we are recommended to work with a seed thought for at least seven days. And there comes a time when we're reflectively working with a seed idea where there's nothing else to explore. We come to a blankness. Now at that moment, lots of us will give up because there's nothing else to think or uh, retrieve from our inner reservoir of um, memory, if you like. But it's just at that time of not knowing that we need to continue because then we're opening the mind to be susceptible to new ideas and ways of being. So seed thoughts can be very invocative and we then cultivate um, an ability to recognize the evoked response from the seed thought that we're working with. Thank you. I hope that was a sufficient answer. If there are um, if you follow up on question, Jen, please uh, either raise your hand or uh, write. Yeah. I have another question. Um, there are so many different uh, groups that work with the um, Bailey books around the world, and many of them they have different interpretations. And uh, if we go further, there are different branches of the ageless wisdom teachings that have even more different, like uh, more uh, uh, varying interpretations of their understanding of the truth. And so how do you see uh, we can work together, different groups, different schools, different traditions, despite of our differences of interpretations and come to that unanimous, simultaneous meditation. Is it possible? Yes. Yes, it is possible. I'll, I'll give a go at answering it. And remember, it's my truth. So if you have to adapt and modify it to fit with your own uh, truth at this time, please do so. Um, we're talking about diversification here. And I don't know how many people are on the planet, millions, I don't know how many, but every single one of them is on their own unique and individual pathway back to God, back home. And how wonderful that there is a diversification in understanding, in experience, because it's almost like painting in numbers. So the creator has or is painting in numbers a new understanding, a new revelation. So different interpretations, different branches of this group service are, I believe, with the best of intentions and working with fundamental principles and laws will bring us to the same destination. And so if we are working with this wisdom work and we're using it to inform our meditation, prayer and service life, then as a group, we are unanimously and simultaneously 
working together towards the same end, whether we know it or not. A huge group effort is underway. Thank you. Very true, very true. <laughs> I think esotericists have to be realistic optimists. I think that's very important. And I've read somewhere the other day that a, a problem is, what is it? It's a, it's a problem is just waiting for a creative solution. So I like that quote. Right before the webinar, we had a short exchange uh, uh, of uh, comments about uh, news, and you said that there are no bad news. So, <laughs> how does it come? How, how does it come? Do you, you, yes, to yes. share with us your wisdom. How, how okay. do you perceive the current chaos of the world? What oh. is this all about, and how we as disciples can, can go into take that. it yes, and <laughs> work with this? Yes. Well, uh, I think Roberto Azajoli wrote a paper some time ago now, and it's talking about when we watch the news, it really is a wonderful spiritual workout because we are challenged to keep our emotional field calm and serene. I have to say that at times I do fail, but we have spiritual recovery courses. So, the thing about the current state of affairs, it is challenging, but it's really worth noticing that conflict creates tension. And within the tension, there comes a point where there is an emergence of a new way, a new solution. And the skill is, not to be drawn into the field of conflict and the field of despond, because that will separate us from our spiritual source. And we need that spiritual connection to keep us alive to the possibilities of a positive, constructive outcome. It also opens us up to new ways of inspiring change and working with change and initiating group projects. If we allow ourselves to be overwhelmed by the gloom and doom, we're next to useless. We've been taken out. And so we need to be alert to this and on our guard and keep our light shining. So watch the news with care, and remember it's your spiritual workout. That's, That's Roberto. <laughs> He's good. Roberto is definitely. <laughs> He's good. He's very good. <laughs> uh, there are several. Uh, there, there is a comment. Oh, and I see there is a raised hand. So always prefer to unmute someone. Hello, Marina, please unmute yourself. It's the button on the control panel. It's uh, orangey red. Okay, yes. okay, okay. So I was listening with uh, great interest uh, to this um, presentation. And uh, even if I know this theme, uh, because I have been using creative meditation, me individual and uh, also our group in Italy for um, since the very beginning, I have to say since the very beginning for um, 38 years. Uh, it's always there is always something new to to understand and um, yes to appreciate. Um, I would uh, highlight the, how Asajoli was uh, really a, a pioneer. Uh, 
because uh, in a time in which uh, nobody uh, was thinking, uh, was speaking about creating a uh, um, network, um, network of light, uh, a network of light among uh, servers, he already uh, thought of this uh, possibility and also um, preparing the tool, um, a practical, very practical tool uh, to do it. And um, now we, there is this uh, huge movement of the mindfulness on the planet, which is extremely important, extremely mm. useful. Mm. Uh, but I believe that really Sajoli had the task to found, to, to ground uh, on the subtle level, the idea of the possibility to create a new world and a new, also a new human being through the power of thought, the power of thinking. And um, I believe also that um, the creative meditation has not given yet and has not um, given out, has, done, has not uh, made available yet uh, its uh, full uh, potentiality, which is, hu which is uh, huge. Um, and uh, um, as we speak always about uh, building a new civilization, but a new civilization needs uh, uh, to find its uh, ways to be built. And I believe that the creative meditation is a primary one. Yeah. yeah. And um, also um, it uses the main uh, uh, power of human being, which is the power of thinking, of right thinking. And so I believe creative meditation as a Sajoli um, created it, did it, is really a tool, an instrument for the future. Probably uh, we should, uh, uh, be able to to make it uh, more desirable, more like mm. give it a uh, um, more actual shape, no? because the shape is the one of um, seventy years ago. Uh, but uh, its essence, its um, uh, the, the thought which is there in it is really very new. Is for the world of yeah. future. Yeah. Yes, Marina, and I have come to realize just recently that the other gift that and you may already have taken note of this, that the mm -hmm. other gift that Azajoli has given us is the fact that he took the laws of the soul and mm -hmm. he has brought them down into a form that we can relate to and apply in everyday relationships. It's not too esoteric. It's not too rarefied. It's doable, it's achievable. And mm. if we can wake up to working with these laws and principles, which are functioning the whole time, whether we know it or not, then we come in to becoming the builders and the architects of this new movement this new civilization right now we are the builders we are using ourselves and as you say our thought life and our words and deeds and actions to actually bring this new civilization this new world culture into people's awareness and we touch an awful lot of people's lives in any one day because we're out and about and you've got your social media going on as well this wonderful technology Very thank you thank intro, you Janet. Yeah. thank you <laughs> thank you marina <laughs> thank you marina and thank you i unmuted michael michael please unmute yourself Yes, hello, Alex and Janet. Um, you already posted the thing I was going to say, but um, those uh, snapshots from the 50s and 60s, I was quite struck by the polarity of what was happening in America at that time, you know, with all the new 
protests and all this fervency of chasing down every communist who actually weren't communists, you know, who were uh, who were good scientists and things, but just caught up in this fervency that we see today, the same thing we see today. Yeah. And, and as you spoke of um, this spiritual workout of the news, I experienced that quite intensely. I, it's difficult to watch. <laughs> It but uh, thinking this way and realizing these two polarities, you know, including DK's work during the war, it, it really yeah. helps. It really, really helps. Yeah. Thank you, Michael, for sharing your positivity there. A realistic optimist. Thank you. We have a um, little time for another comment. If anyone has any question or comment, please. Hello? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Alex, we can hear you, yes. Hi. Hi, Janet. Thank you so much for such a clear, really delightfully clear um, talk presentation with enough space in between so that we could just absorb what you were saying it's so important to be able to take it all in so thank you so much it was just beautiful um i loved the images the photos at the beginning um mm -hmm. i think it's really valuable to see isn't it making it grounded and real for us these, <laughs> these people these pioneers and so many women i'll just put that yes. out there so so many uh beautiful strong clear women and um also i like what you said about you know we can't help but be doing and being um, who we need to be, you know, by virtue of our practices mm -hmm. and, and the meditation, because once you, you know, it's said once you've touched the self, you become radioactive. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, uh, as you speak, I was thinking that is one of the best things we can do and be for these troubled times. Yeah, yes. yeah. You know, and, and as you say, be out there and be out there and uh, not hide the light under a bushel um, no. and, and, and speak to people and be with people because they are troubled. And they are. Um, it doesn't require necessarily any instruction, but it, it is very helpful to be um, that to have that magnetism or radiation. You know, yeah. um, and I think uh, also the degree of positivity or negativity we have, it depends on where where we're giving our attention. Mm -hmm. And um, we have to find that, as you say, very fine line uh, where you're not self-absorbed, um, mm -hmm. but you're not being pulled outwardly too much as well. And and you know, and you, as you speak to people, you can tell which way they're going, depending upon, you know, their degree of positive or negative. Mm. But we have to we have to be in the center of the storm. Uh, this is increasingly my feeling of 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 realizing there is a storm. In fact, there's always been a storm. If you look at any point in history, uh, any point in history, this is not a peaceful planet <laughs> so uh, this is not unusual but it's unusual for us at this time and we're, we're, we're thrown into confusion and, um, and 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 I think ultimately what this is is a test for us I mean it, ultimately it's part of the plan and it's whatever it is but I see it as increasingly as a test for us that this is all about facing the shadow. Um, we, we think it's the shadow out there, and if only that would change, and that would be, you know, all right. But in fact, what it brings up in us is really what we have to do. So, you know, in, in that sense, you could call it a blessing if you feel like that. <laughs> but it is. We, we are, Alex, we, we are pioneers. 
we are we have volunteered for this and i think we have to bear that in mind and there's mm -hmm. a what sorry i said that's yep. good <laughs> that's good and there's a wonderful quote here from krishnamurti which i'll share because it's so relevant to what you've been saying and this quote is about our inner work because our work our inner work is a gift to the world and to humanity. So here it comes. The problem of the individual is also the world's problem. They are not two separate and distinct processes. You are the repository of all humanity. You are the world and the world is you. And if there is a radical transformation in the structure of an individual's psyche, it will affect the whole consciousness of humanity. It's, it's our work. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And it's a wonderful team effort. It's not as if we're alone. It's a huge global universal movement. And we're in it. And we're doing it. But it absolutely tests your resources. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, you know, and, you know, some people are sinking. And we have to steady the boat. <laughs> we have to steady the boat. Steady we the have boat. to be the life draft then. We have to be out there doing. Come on, chaps and chapesses. We can do this. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Janet. Yeah. Go, Janet. Go. Go, everyone. <laughs> um, there are several comments that I've been reposting on the chat. Uh, oh, go on. We don't have much time to read it, but there's one more raised hand that I've like on mute. So... Yes, Olga, hello. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Olga Pavlova. Um, universology group um, that was just presenting recently, uh, Tatiana Chuznaka was presenting, um, and I'm very happy that um, we are doing this uh, work, we are getting together through webinars. Thank you very much, Alexander, thank you mm. very much Janet, for your wonderful, very well organized presentation. It's such a great possibility for us to know each other, to learn from each other. And um, I liked many ideas that huge group effort is on the way and it's the global universal work. And my dream that after all those presentations and um, our work through webinars, will get together and meditate together and create our own uh, universal documents about because it's a huge movement mm. new world server we go now to uh, to be externalized to yes not just yeah esoteric yeah because it's really as it's a, Krishnamurti said, our inner work is a gift for humanity and we need to make it not only inner but outer work because mm. now we are become more uh, larger and larger and um, more, yeah, we, we need to create our own documents and give it to humanity that we exist and we because many people think meditation is just sitting doing nothing or just thinking about yourself uh, trying to find some uh, some connection with the god but they they have no idea about the group work how important mm -hmm. it is and we need to give new ideas we uh, like this creative meditation we have our own meditation very similar so we need to teach humanity how to meditate 
not a, just some trivial thing, but thinking about new, about the future, new civilization. So this is really a huge work and it should be unanimous, uh, unified, and that's what we're doing. So those thoughts came to my mind that we could uh, create some mutual documents, maybe one manifesto, something new, because it was <laughs> like Karl Marx created the communist manifesto, which became <laughs> like a great now another manifesto is on the way. People should know about us, right? So we all need to think about it. <laughs> That's the, <laughs> the new street <thing> for thoughts. <laughs> I propose. <laughs> Olga, you're obviously good at thinking big thoughts. And I like very much that you mentioned that yes, I'm an Aquarius. <laughs> yes, well, you're carrying that energy very well. Olga, you mentioned in your sharing there that it's externalizing this movement by the fact that there are so yes. many of us now using our creative meditation lives in some way to externalize these ideas, these laws and principles yes. of everyday living in everyday living so that people come alive to them. A few years ago in this country, 2012, we hosted the Olympic Games in London and people, oh. I think I think this happens all around the world where, when the Olympic Games are host are held, they ask for volunteers to go along and help the spectators mm. and help things run smoothly. Now we don't live near London, we're about 65 miles, we're a good distance from London, but after those games had gone home. I was going into the village shop. We only have one village shop. I was going, I was traveling on buses and going into the local town. And I was hearing people saying that they had been volunteers at the 2012 Olympics. And it had been the most wonderful experience in their lives. And why couldn't it be like that every day, everywhere? And they then went on to share and talk about goodwill in action. So it is possible yeah. for this movement to come alive and be externalized. And we do it one by one and we build a collective. So well done, Olga. Go on having your big ideas. <laughs> They're wonderful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Olga. And thank you, Janet. And I think now we are... Uh, getting closer to the uh, last part of our webinar today, you know, of our work, which is the most important part, is meditation. Okay. Right. Thank you very much, Alex. So shall we prepare for meditation then? Yes. Shall we? Okay. So creative meditation working with the applied livingness of the qualities and values of the soul. Take a few moments now to take up a comfortable position and close your eyes. Take a few deep breaths. Relax the physical body and feel it soften. Calm the emotions and notice the release. The focused, attentive mind is now inhabiting the field of mind. 
bring it lightly to rest in the Ajna center. Allow the consciousness to travel along a line of light into the center of the head, the cave in the head. And affirm silently to yourself, I am the incarnating soul present in the here and now. I am the incarnating soul present in the here and now. Extend a line of light vertically from the center of the head into the overshadowing soul and the group soul. And let's dedicate ourselves to the group work, the work of the hierarchy and the Christ. I will say this dedication on our behalf. We dedicate ourselves with all men and women of goodwill everywhere to the building of the new civilization through synthesis, right relations and goodwill. Approach and contact with the soul. Realize that the inner powers need our cooperation for the plan to be expressed on earth and that their help is available. Repeat silently the following words from the message of the Christ, I stand and wait, endeavoring to realize their blessing and deeper meaning. Keep close in touch with me, the Christ, and with the master who surveys your life. With us are found the forces of the living light and love, which you must use. Keep close to us and day by day, draw on that strength and knowledge, which we have and which is also yours. Let naught disturb the acquiescent calm which keeps you close in touch, which brings you light and understanding and keeps you steadfast on the way. Take a moment now to give some reflective consideration to this mantra.
receptive meditation. Pause for a moment of inner silent stillness, holding the mind focused, receptive and open to receiving new insights and impressions. Affirmation. Using the creative imagination, the will to good, and the power of the soul, say aloud if possible, may the loving understanding of myself, my soul, be present in my thoughts, words, and deeds this day, and act as a blessing for all those I meet and come into contact with. And let's close with a great invocation, followed by three alms. The Great Invocation. From the point of light, within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love, within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the centre where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the centre, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth.
And when you're ready, return to normal focus and prepare to carry on with your day or evening's work. Thank you very much.